This is the short edit of this very long track. A lot of time spent tracking or look, the camera looking down, I cut out of it. If you want to see the full version of Jaeger working on the entire thing, there's a longer edit of this on the channel as well. All right, Jaeger. We are at the Chattanooga TWRA SCI Wounded Veterans Hunt. We helped with this a few years now, and some hunters were here, supposedly shot a deer that way. Don't know the hit site. They're stopped tracking it. So we're gonna go see if we can find them and then pick the track up. Good boy, Yeager. Well, I don't know how he found the hit site, but I see blood here. This is definitely an atypical start. It's, it's not very common to not have a hunter be able to show you the hit site or the area. So kind of lucky. We just kind of do some grid searching. Jaeger was able to find some visible sign and start to show it and indicate, you know, that he was on, on a line and tracking. Now, all we knew at this point was that multiple hunters and game wardens were looking for this deer. So we had a direction of travel. I know it's contaminated scent wise. I know that there's going to be some challenges. So I'm just trying to move to this area kind of quickly. And I'm trying to call to the wardens and just find them. I just want Diego to track as fast as he can through this. But in the end, that also imparted some confusion. And we ended up having to sort some challenging sign and indicators out. Hello? When we pop out here, I call to the wardens and no response. We actually spent a good bit of time going back and forth on this pavement looking for blood. The only blood we actually found was Jaeger's and he had cut his tongue. But something seemed off. If you watch the full version of the video, you can see all the time we spent here sorting it out. But in the end, all the signals were something was off. Couldn't hear the wardens. So I made the call to turn around, go back, and reset on blood back in those pines and figure out what went wrong. Okay. Wait. So here we go now. We have obvious we blood go. on the ground. A uh, significant amount. And so let's take a look at what just happened and, and why we reversed. So here you can see where we parked the truck. We went to the blind. We started in, in the suspected hit area and we progressed kind of to the left of the screen and there was blood on the ground and then we we moved through and hit that that road that that old pavement and we did some searching back and forth that's the yellow zone and then we reset we went back into the woods we're figuring out all right we know a confirmed right, point where'd she go from here where'd he go where'd she go where'd he go so this is now a, a suspected bedding site and and what i suspect is where the initial tracking team bumped the deer. A wounded deer will generally hold a direction of travel when undisturbed. But once they bed, and if they're jumped from that bed, they may leave that bed in any direction. So what likely happened earlier was the deer was moving one way, had bedded there, the initial tracking team bumped it. They may have looked around as well, went to the road, looked all over. We overshot the bed. Same thing, wrapped up in whatever sensor there went back and now Jaeger is figuring out the new direction of travel. Hold on. Okay. So let's go show what we showed here. We worked this out. The deer was bedded. Come here. Come here. We follow blood to here, here, and there's good blood here, but it looks like the deer actually left a different way. So we overshot this. We, we hit that paint concrete. I'm like, oh, there's nothing there. So then we came back to here, and now Jaeger has found blood leaving a different way. So the deer must have been bedded there. Let's go over here, here. You can see now blood again. And, okay, Jaeger, just hold on. We're gonna get going. Okay, hold on, just hold on. Good boy, Jaeger. Good boy, hang on. Jaeger, whoa. Get 
to you. What are you on? You're on blood. Okay. So now that we're back on some pretty visible sign, I'm just trying to, again, let Jaeger work fast, track fast. I'm hoping we can catch up to the tracking party quickly. Uh, coming out of a bed when a deer's been bumped, it's usually running. So I know it's going to be spotty. Jaeger's really moving with confidence through through all this stuff. And we're angling almost back towards the direction we came, and then now we're returning. And we start progressing in a slightly different direction. So we're moving and again. just trying Find to close the distance between ourselves and Find the track party. Good boy. Good turn. Good boy. Good boy. You guys hear me? Oh, Jaeger here. here. Right there, we see the blue flag on some, oh, some yeah. gut material and there's some blood right there. Yeah, I see it. All right, we're gonna call it off. We can come back. Come on, Jaeger. Come on. He's, he's right on her. All right, now let's get caught up on our overview here. So you can see again, truck, blind, the overshoot area. Then we found the bed. And you see that there's a sharp kind of turn to the north there. We had a new direction of travel. We worked that whole system out. We crossed that next kind of block zone and caught up to the game wardens on this other kind of pavement crossing where they had marked blood. The hunters there informed me they'd only waited 10 minutes, so it was an easy decision. Let's just all back out of here. We'll give her time. We'll come back later. All right. We waited around four hours to return to the track, and then now I'm joined by Wardens Holt and Davis, who were on the original track, um, but it's just the small team now. And it was funny that, you know, one of the hunters based on how far she'd already gone, you know, was certain that this doe would be laying, you know, 100 yards from where we stopped and really wanted to keep tracking. And I think as you're about to see unfold, uh, that was highly inaccurate. And so there's there's no sign now. Uh, Jaeger sets on a line and we track and track. And we track for, for quite a ways before we see any sort of confirmation. So we sit back and watch him work, and then we're going to cross a lot of ground. We doubt ourselves, and then we finally get confirmation again. Here's one of the realities of leaf tracking and why a long lead helps. So I get tangled up here. That pauses Jaeger and imparts some confusion on him. He thinks I'm telling him to go a different way. So he runs a loop, actually, and then comes back to the line. And then you'll see him hit the line here and just kind of take off like a rocket ship. And that's how I know, all right, he's back on it. Sorry, bud, I messed you up. Let's just keep going. I haven't seen any sign for a while. Droppings here. Yeah, girl, are you? I got droppings. I haven't seen blood in a while. It's certainly the stuff deer love to die in, but. Yep, he's on her. I got blood. Hold on, Jaeger. I don't know exactly where. Hang on, Jaeger. Good boy. That's some good tracking. What is it, ticker? Hang on, hang on, hang on, yeah, hang on, bud. 
So we've now gone a long way. We're roughly 700 yards in at this point from the betting turn. Um, and for that last segment from, you can see where we reparked the truck and then restarted there in the middle of the frame and then moved north. And now we're kind of progressing a, a little to the left of the frame. Uh, no sign until we hit that pavement again. And I'm really doubting whether it was even a lethal hit at this point, or, you know, has the deer just been pushed where it's gone so far and, you know, it's going to take who knows how long to expire. But Jaeger's on it and he's excited to go and we're going to keep going. Let me ask you this. Do you think it would be beneficial for one of us to get on the other side of this block in case we were to push it out? If it's getting pushed out, it's, it's not a dead point. deer. I mean, as far as we've gone, 10 o'clock, 10, 11, 10, 10, 11, 10 50, I think 10, you said. Lay up yeah. And there was only that one bed. At this point, with the lack of sign that's been going on now for hundreds of yards until we confirmed it back there. I'm really not even looking at the ground anymore. I'm just looking at Jaeger. And I'm checking the way the wind direction is blowing and I'm watching his body language. And there I can see he, he went one way, he came back. He's re, he's reestablishing the line here and I am just in full faith now. We've got hundreds of yards. Jaeger is locked onto this deer. We've gone through a lot of deer-dense areas. We've found other deer's droppings. We've seen a lot of sign, yet Jaeger is, seems determined he's going to find this deer. So I am just letting him do his thing. Where'd she go? Where'd she go, Jaeger? Where'd she go? Tell you what, these red berries look an awful lot like blood. They fooled me a number of times. Jaeger, hold on. Hold on. Yeah. But I'm starting to get the feeling that she might not be dead. Do what? Where'd she go, Jaeger? Could you take us into any thicker crap? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Where is she? Where do you think she went? 
Yeah, there's blood here. Just another drip. Can one of y'all walk around this? Yeah, you're a good boy. Oh, oh, I, I see your bed. She bedded here. There's a lot of blood in the bed. Uh, come, come hold him. I'm gonna come inspect the bed. All right, I got his lead. You got him. I mean, she tucked up into some thick, thick stuff. Good boy, Jaeger. Can't even get to it. I mean, I think this is a deer that will die. This is the bed. Oh yeah, it's definitely gut shot. But he hit something important too. The question is, where does she get out of here? Is there a trail outside this? I can't get through this without a machete. Let's, let's try to see if we can't cut anything on that road. She had to have, I mean, she bedded here. I can see where she crawled on this stick. Oh, I mean, it's tough not knowing, you know, with the... I mean, do you think we jumped her? I don't think we jumped her, no. You think she just that blood's, forward? that blood's dried up enough. <laughs> Digger, we're going to try to cut around. You come right here where I can... At this point, we, we couldn't really move in the briar patch. It's kind of to the right of the frame here, but we were crawling under what you see there in that vegetation and just couldn't move. So we're trying to now assess... If she made it out, this is the direction to travel. Where sh where sh could she have gone? And it's just, as you can see, it's just a wall of vegetation in a lot of directions. And with the sign from the bed, intuition would say that there's gonna be signs she would have left if she made it out this far. And this is where kind of tracking teamwork and judgment just kind of comes into play. We're out here trying to reconfirm and just not getting a sense of where she went. We have to reestablish where she went or come up with a new plan. Can you tell on your Onyx where that bed was to my right? Ow. Damon, do you think she climbed out of this crap from in there? I don't, I think she backtracked. Did she backtrack out or backtrack out the end of here? That bed is roughly 12 to 15 yards directly in front. Yeah. Here. I'll just hold him here. I mean, there was a lot of blood in that bed. She laid there for a while. Stay. I mean, she's going to leave sign going through this tall stuff. On this big she ha she'd have to. She'd I mean, yeah, she, her, her, her belly's probably coated in a lot of blood. Yeah. You'd think that... Not. And she crawled, so I'm wondering if she's not in that thicket. To the left before we came out? Yeah. Because it seems like if she came out the way we just did, that we'd see some some kind of sign. We've had blood on us Yeah. Just hold him if you would. Yes. Going back in, Jaeger, without you. Oh, Jaeger. All right. Come here. All right. Yeah. I'll I got her now. I got him now. All right, Jaeger. Good boy. We're back in that bed. We went out and said it doesn't make any sense that she would have gotten out of here. Jaeger, here, here. You can finish it over here. And then came back in here. And there she is. This is nasty. All right, Jaeger, good boy. Let me see if I can get there. Here, I'm gonna do the. I'll try to drag her out. Uh, 
Jaeger. Ben, do you have like some, uh, can you can you pull him back a few feet? Jaeger, I don't want you eating the eating that. Yeah. She was gut shot, but you did good work, Jaeger. That was a good track. Oh, good boy, Jaeger. Come here. Oh boy. Oh. Oh yeah. They're mine. Alright, thanks. Okay. We're just gonna turn the camera off. Good boy, Jaeger. So let's look at the end of that track closely. You can see where we marked blood on the road on the right side of the frame. We proceeded to the left, entered that rock quarry. Jaeger did that double back loop. We entered the briar thicket and then it was so thick. We couldn't really move in it. I saw a bloody bed, I inspected it, I had tied Jaeger off, and we just didn't see her. So we proceeded in the direction of travel outside of the thicket, looked around, didn't see anything, and it just didn't make any sense. So Logic took over and decided to go back in, and just when I went in a different angle, I was able to spot her white belly tucked up under some briars. So three of us were in there, she was, she was within 10 yards of us. We just simply couldn't see her. It was so thick. But going in a different way, was able to see her and close it out. And logic prevailed. Good recovery in the end. TWRA doing all the hard work. I want to give our thanks to the wardens and folks at TWRA for the efforts they put into helping hunters here in the state of Tennessee. This is a great example of going the extra mile and using every resource available to them to help recover this deer for the hunter. It would have been easy to give up on this doe, and they didn't. We used Jaeger. We worked as a team and able to successfully recover her and she send her home with the hunter. Two. Hear that, Jaeger? You get your junior Paw Patrol sticker. Shot placement analysis here is pretty simple. Pure gut shot, broadside, behind the vitals. Luckily enough was hit that she was able to expire in a, rel a relatively quick amount of time for a gut shot. Here let's look at now the overall Onyx overview of this entire track because it was a long one. So on the bottom of the frame, you can see where we parked the truck the first time, the blind, the initial track, the bed, the overshoot area. And then she progressed kind of north up the frame. And once she was bumped, we then we got to that point, the back out point, we marked blood. We came back four hours later, parked the trucks again, went back in again. And you can see she progressed up the frame, kind of wrapping to the left, with very little or no sign until the eventual recovery point. Now the lesson here is time is always your friend. Had this deer been given an hour, after the initial shot, she probably would have been dead in those pines where we found the initial bed. But waiting only 10 minutes, she was bumped and she fled to find another area of security. Now that's a long way to go. It beat Jaeger up, it beat us up, and fortunately we recovered her. Now, the other fortunate side of it is that we're hunting a massive property here. It would have been very easy for this deer on smaller parcels to have left the property. And despite what a lot of people think, in Tennessee, you must have landowner permission to cross property lines, even if you have blood. And no, a game warden can't give you permission to go recover your deer. You must have it from the landowner. So this is an excellent example of time is your friend. Give them time, your recovery jobs are going to be easier. When you don't give them time and you bump them from that first bed, things get a lot more complicated quickly.